Sip and Stay, the show where we explore the winemaking process from dirt to bottle. We'll talk with some of the top winemakers in the world and check out the best places to stay, dine, and sip while exploring the many different AVA regions in the United States. This weekend I am making my way to Southern Oregon and the neighboring AVAs of the Applegate and Rogue Valleys. Southern Oregon has been identified as one of the most diverse wine growing regions in the country with over 70 varietals. It is January and this is where it all begins. For the next few months, you will see winemakers in the vineyards pruning the vines. What happens now will determine what kind of harvest they will have in the fall. What we do this time of year is the pruning, which starts the, before we have bud break in uh, spring, you gotta prune. What we do now sets the stage for what kind of fruit we're gonna get, uh, fruit set, uh, the quantity and quality. So I'd like to show you how, how it's that's done. That's great, that's exciting. I've never done this before. In the dormancy, everything, all the leaves are gone. The, the canes, these are canes. These are the buds that will produce. This is a cordon and this is a spur. This is a spur. Off of the spur becomes uh, the shoots here. So what I'm trying to do is get down to two oh. buds. I don't, there's a bud down here, I don't count that, it's a basil bud, but this bud and this bud on the other side are my two buds. This is the last one, I'm actually gonna leave three down here. And this is the dead wood. We pull the dead wood, you can burn it, you can mulch it. I've left a, a one extra one here. In the spring, let's say late March, early April, when we start warming up and things are pushing, the very first one that's gonna break bud is usually the one at the very end. If we have a frost there right after that, I've left myself one extra bud, so let's say this, this were to uh, push on like April 5th, and somewhere around April 15th it's setting up here and I get a frost. I've got a couple other ones here to push as well, so I have a little bit of frost protection. And you wanna cut a little bit of an angle, make sure we don't have water setting on the, the cut or the open wound. So these two little buds that I left here will push two shoots. They grow rapidly through the month of May, the fruit hangs in here. This is called a fruiting wire. So your fruit zone's in here and it makes it very uniform. What you're looking for in wine is uniformity. Uh, with all your grapes ripening at the same time, having the same uh, sugar content, pH content, acid, and that makes the best wine. That old saying, it starts here in the vineyard. It starts in January, February, maybe early March before we get, uh, before the vines wake up. Okay, you said if I cut one of these that maybe I'll, All right. I'll be in one of your All award winning right. wines. Yes, so here, it, put it in there and take the top one off, leaving the lower okay. one, and then we'll leave these two buds here. Uh huh, crunch. Oh, there you go. Nice tool. Okay, and now <laughs> go ahead and, and cut it at a diagonal at about, yeah, halfway between that one and the other one there. This is my wine. Yeah. Want my name so on see, the label? you are you are making Tempranillo <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> which is a is a wonderful Spanish grape and does extremely well here in Southern Oregon. Maybe I'll come back and make <laughs> you pick or something. Each vine is touched about 15 times by hand, and I'm a very small vineyard with only 5,000 plants roughly, so you can tell 15 times five. There's a lot of touches in it that goes into a, a growing season. Great. Uh, so that just gives you an idea. Uh, how much labor is involved, but you know, it's a labor of love. So. Yeah, you have to love it. And I can't wait to try some of your wine. All right. What I'd like to pour for you first is Grenache. Grenache is the lightest uh, of our uh, red wines. Uh, Grenache tends to drink similar characteristics to a Pinot Noir. So, uh -huh. Yeah, but it's not as big and bold as let's say some of uh, some of the bigger reds that you'll see. Yeah, it's light. Lighter color. Beautiful uh -huh. color. This is, color. yeah. Uh, but Grenache has some really neat characteristics. A lot, a lot of times it'll have some cinnamon notes and uh, uh, cranberry and, oh, and cherry. Rhone varietals do extremely well in Southern Oregon. Uh, Grenache has proven to do very well. Um, so where, where, when you're opening a winery, where do you buy vines? I mean... There's nurseries, uh, nurseries throughout the West Coast. You know, uh, Oregon, Washington, California are definitely the wine producers of the of the United States. Uh, our dry our dry summers uh, really lend itself to all the old world vines. And it's funny that you would ask, and I would tell you that we are planting Merlot, Cab Franc, Malbec. Chardonnay and some additional Grenache, which are we are having as well. By the way, I love your tasting room. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about when people can come and see you. Well, uh, this year, you know, last year it was every Saturday, and um, when we condense 
uh, a week's worth of tasting to a Saturday, it can be a lot of fun. It can be a fun for everybody. They say, some of our guests say, you guys throw the best parties. <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 we thought we were just throwing a tasting. You know, this is our farm stand. But uh, this year we're gonna, we're gonna consolidate. We're gonna go ahead and do first and third weekends of every month, so May through September. And we want people to come up and enjoy the view. The, the view here is pretty special. We wanna share it with our new friends, our wine club members, uh, guests, uh, a lot of people from out of town or out of the state and uh, who don't have this type of uh, scenery to look at. So we're, we feel really blessed to offer that and let them enjoy that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes, um, when we can, we have some amazing food trucks. We had a wood-fired pizza truck oh, and that's some very nice, high-quality, high-end food that would come down here. And that was popular, as well as we always offer some light food menu. But we'll throw some games out there. We always have games for the kids. They have a little playground over there. If adults feel uh, competitive and they want to get their hand at bocce, we allow them to go to the bocce, the gazebos, and of course the gardens look beautiful in the spring, like, right. summer, and fall. Children will pick the strawberries, and that was excellent, by the way. So the next wine we want to pour is uh, Tempranillo. This is the uh, 2013 Tempranillo. A Tempranillo, like we say, is a Spanish varietal. It's the third most planted grape in all the world. And uh, this is the vine I just cut. Then this is yes, I'm, yeah. I'm part of your yeah, yeah. I love our Tempranillo. It's so, beautiful. when we harvest, and we uh, our harvest looks like this, we usually have our friends, family, and wine club members come out and help with harvest since we're small lots. And Rob Fullen, being our winemaker, he is his production facility is located about 20 miles away. So we literally pick the grapes as early as we can in the morning, put them on the truck and trailer, and run to Rob's, and we process immediately wow. for and. Uh, and we hand sort everything. But the great thing about having friends, family, and wine club members is they're coming for food and wine, so there's no rush, and we very meticulously sort in the field. And so what does it mean to be in a wine club? Uh, wine club is just usually, they're gonna offer some type of benefit that's not available to the general public. Uh, usually a discount, that it would extend beyond what it would be offered to the general public. Uh, we have special release wines we make only for the wine club. And then they get to come to the parties that we have on a release party. I told Catherine, you know, when we have such small planning, but I wanted some Bordeaux grapes, because I love Bordeaux wines. And we just didn't have the room for it at the time uh, until we acquired this other piece of property. So much complexity yeah. in the blends, and it's, it's it's like painting with more than one color, as you know. Yeah. So with this, in, in this case, we painted mm -hmm. with four colors. Just complexity. More complex. I complexity. And yeah. Layering. I think that's the beauty. Layering. It's more artistry. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I love Very a single nice. varietal, for instance, our Tiffany Ganache, because they are fully expressive of that grape. Uh huh. But these are fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they pair very well with so many things. Cheers. 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 <laughs> that was a great start. Not too far away is my next stop, Two Hawk Winery. Okay, I'm here with Robert, who's a tasting room manager, and Ross, who takes care of all the vines and is the owner. And we're at Two Hawks Vineyard in Medford, Oregon, and we're going to have a tasting. So I'm going to start you out with the 2014 Chardonnay. Rock solid varietal character. Uh, there's a little bit of oak on this wine. It has a nice fruit, hint of citrus, green apple. Nice example of what Chardonnay should be. Some of the fermentation was in stainless steel. It's also had some oak uh, yeah, uh, barrel program. 50 50, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh boy, moving on to the reds. <laughs> so, this is a 2014 Pinot Noir. Nice. Where did you get your name? Um, it's from the two red-tailed hawks that patrol every day over the vineyard. Really? Yes. So two birds that are hawks. Yeah, they're, they're two created red your name. There's two red-tailed hawks that patrol patrol over the vineyard for vermin, <laughs> uh, gophers and squirrels. It's very and helpful. And yeah, very, very much so. Uh, so what would you pair this with? This is a pinot. Well, in Oregon, we're kind of crazy about salmon. So mm. poached salmon with uh, a nice creamy dill sauce is straightforward or grilled. A uh, uh, field green salad on the side with uh, maybe some local rogue creamery blue cheese crumbles on there. This is very nice. Thank you. Or we like smoked salmon with it too. <laughs> this is uh, a wine we call Red Tail Red. It's a Red Tail Red version too. It's a Bordeaux uh, style blend of Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot, and Merlot. 
Yeah. You won't like it. I yeah. love blends. Just, just wait. You can go. Yeah, you can I, like this. Right, no. <laughs> just a description. Okay, I'll take it away from no, you. No, that's just... okay. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Very food friendly wine. I like balanced. version one. Version two is a major step. I'm looking forward to version three. Which hasn't come out yet. Yeah. You have to come back and see what's coming down the pipe as far as what we're developing profile wise, mouthfeel wise, and that type of thing. Because, one, you know, I tell everyone wine should be, wine's an experience. I mean, you can drink anything. You can go down to the grocery store and buy whatever you want off the shelf. If you just want a bottle of red wine, I mean, five ninety nine, you got a bottle of red wine. But wine, no matter what the price, should be an experience. It's like going out to dinner. When you go out to a nice restaurant and you have that that meal that's well, we we all eat every day. It's just part of this, what we do to survive. But if you have one of those meals that you at the end you just kind of push back from the table and go, wow. Have that that, ex that that you've had an experience. You just didn't eat dinner. You had an experience. A glass of wine should be like that as well. It you know? enriches our lives. It, it, it does. It, does. Yeah. it slows you down. Yes. I, I take the smallest sips. It takes me forever. But I, I mean, at the but, end of the day, a nice bottle of wine, some good food, yeah. dinner out. Yeah. It's a celebration of life. Isn't That's it? right. And here's the thing about wine tasting come back to the same winery year after year and find out what's going on. That's right. Because it's going to be different. Yeah. It's going to be a different year. It's going to be different weather. It's going to well, be different grapes. I love your tasting room. Oh my gosh. I could just... Thank you so much. I could really <laughs> hang out here for hours. Well, all the, stone, all the stones, those are actually real stones and they come from the vineyard. Those oh, were really? actually harvested oh, no. out of the vineyard floor and, and used in the construction of the building and then uh, the wood uh, is reclaimed lumber from all across the United States. So pretty in here. And, uh, so kind Very of, natural and just feels warm and it's it's quite mm, large you. in here. And you guys have food as well, I know it's before eating. Yes, we do. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So this is a Cristini with uh, a salmon lox, uh, a cream cheese spread with uh, capers, wow. and some dill. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's delicious. Wow, it's perfect wine food, isn't it? I'm crazy about Cabernet Franc, and the fruit balance, and the acidity in this, and the hint of herbaceousness is is beautiful. Uh, it's a medium-bodied example of Cabernet Franc. Wow, and, delicious. I'm trying not to eat that on film, but it's really good. <laughs> well, and then and you, you have a bite, you have a sip, right. you have a bite. You have a set, and you capture that. And again, it's about an experience. You guys are offering you know? experience here. That's right. Yeah. That. And memories. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I think everybody here appreciates the, the preciousness of life, the importance that being tied to the seasons and the land and working in concert with that really enriches our lives. And it makes for uh, a really wonderful way to be human. It works. Yeah. One thing that's exciting about what Ross is doing in the vineyard is getting everything in balance out here to get the best fruit expression so that when Kylie does see this stuff show up at the crush pad, uh, he's got the very best example what this particular grape can do when the wine is finished. So at this time in January, what, what is Kylie doing with wine production? I mean, what is going on now? Because I know the crush happens in October, typically, uh -huh. right? And so... September, October. Right now, there's uh, exciting things like uh, stirring barrels. It really is exciting. I thought maybe it's, he was lost so no, literally. No, no. <laughs> stirring barrels, uh, a lot of lab analysis and that type of thing for annual reporting and that type of thing. So he's going pretty busy in the lab. Wow, so it's a year it's a year round job it is. wine making. Yeah. For us as Oregonians, we have uh, we have to kind of cut our own path and, and find our, our niche within the on the world stage. Right. And uh, and that's happening right here. It has been a beautiful day of tasting wine in Southern Oregon and I have worked up quite the appetite. For years I have heard about a wine bar located in Grants Pass called the Twisted Cork. The name alone made me think it would be a perfect place to end my day, and I heard they had an amazing and quite large wine list. I have about 900 different varieties. They're all Northwest, Oregon, Washington, California. 
I took their advice and chose three dishes that would pair with a different wine. All right, some Kahlua prawns for you. The first course was Kahlua prawns with a champagne citrus beer blanc and candied bacon over a bed of arugula. Mmm. Oh. A lot of taste, crunchy, silky beer blanc, crispy bacon, cooked perfectly. That's really good. The next course was a herb crusted rack of lamb with pomegranate and pistachio couscous, a spicy red wine gas streak, and sauteed vegetables. This was paired with a Plaisance Ranch Syrah. Nice. And so you guys are known for pairing wines and food. We are. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cooked perfectly, charred on the outside rare in the inside. The couscous is, adds a lot of flavor and the sauce is perfect. And that is a perfect pairing. Mm. Excellent. For dessert, I tried the chocolate decadence cake. A flourless chocolate cake layered with caramel and port infused chocolate mousse topped with chocolate curls. Wow. And you're pairing it with this wine. It's paired with the Eliana, it's a dessert blend. Mm. Really good, nice dark wine to offset that sweetness. That is beautiful. Yeah, you enjoy, okay? Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Are you ready for this? I've just gone to heaven, but I should try this. <laughs> Perfect pairing, fluffy chocolate with flourless on the bottom. So it's a little bit thicker and more decadent. The caramel is perfect. And then you've got these little rolled pieces of chocolate. Mm. Mm. Dinner could not have been more perfect, especially since I was in walking distance from my hotel. It was a full day and the sun was setting on the Rogue River. I enjoyed an evening stroll to the lodge at Riverside in Grants Pass. Grants Pass is a beautiful river town that welcomes the nature lover and explorer while still offering abundance of luxury options. The Rogue River runs through the center of town and this weekend I am staying at the lodge at Riverside. The lodge is conveniently located within walking distance of Hellgate jet boats, downtown shopping, and a short drive to the Applegate Valley wine country. My room, a master suite, was spacious, elegant, and cozy. The pillow top bed looked out over the Rogue River and there was a jacuzzi tub in the room. There was a separate sitting area with a river rock fireplace and at night I fell asleep listening to the sounds of the Rogue River. There was also a variety of deluxe, junior and standard rooms. And most rooms have a private balcony or patio that faces the Rogue River and outdoor heated pool. The pool was a great place to relax during the day, read a book, or just gaze out at the Rogue River, and across the way is a beautiful Riverside Park. In the afternoon, a complimentary wine and cheese happy hour is offered in the lodge, and a full breakfast is served each morning with indoor and outdoor seating. I am standing at the beautiful lodge at the lodge at Riverside. We are right in the heart of Grants Pass. They are having a happy hour right now. So you get some cheese, some crackers, a little bit of wine. At the end of my stay, I felt a renewed sense of tranquility from sleeping beside the Rogue River in Grants Pass, Oregon. Today I made my way out to the Applegate Valley. The Applegate Valley is surrounded by the Siskiyou Mountains and has a moderate climate with warm days and cool nights, perfect for growing warm climate varieties. My first stop is Schmidt Family Vineyards and I planned my arrival during lunch as I was told they have some excellent choices. Biscuit and I are at Schmidt Family Vineyards in the Applegate Valley. It is a gorgeous day in Southern Oregon in January and uh, we're going to have a tasting. Um, I just poured you our 2015 Chardonnay. This is aged 100% uh, on stainless steel. No secondary fermentation, very clean, very crisp. 
there's two different ways of making Chardonnay. You know, you know, one we call what we call the Napa style, uh, for want of a better name. And, and, and what the Napa style is, is uh, La Roque, uh, new oak every year. And uh, the uh, what I what I try to characterize it as a Southern Oregon style is is very little oak or no oak, and uh, ferments strictly on stainless. It, get, it gives it a totally different uh, sense. You know, the, the stainless steel is very crisp and mineral, a lot of minerality, whereas the, uh, whereas the oak in the, uh, really stands out in what we call the Napa style. I do think, too, um, wine is trendy and I, um, styles come and go, and I think right now the trend really is clean uh, stainless aged Chardonnays. We do not get a lot of folks in here looking for um, really oaky Chardonnays. Well, and I think that's why people should come and wine taste, whether you're, you know you know your wine and you know what you like or you're just broadening your horizons. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great way to come out and relax. I always feel like wine tasting is just really relaxing. Well, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there with the wine tasting. Because if you go to a, a grocery store or liquor store, the only thing you can do is look at what somebody else has said about the wine. You don't get to taste the wine. Now here you can come out here, you can taste the wine and say, you know, you may have won double gold, I don't like it. You know, to me, I, there is no such thing as, as a good wine or a bad wine. If you like it's good, if you don't, it's bad. And and that's that's kind of what we look at it, you know. And it, thank God everybody's taste is different. Right. <laughs> or there'd only be one wine. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> One of the reasons why we grow so many different varietals these cars are this, this is what, what I would call a destination winery. People who come here, uh, some come at noon and stay to five, you know, because we offer, uh, you know, uh, food that complements the, uh, the wine. And not only do we have about three and a half acres of landscaping that people can come and bring their, their frisbees, their dogs, their, uh, their lunch. Their kids. Their, their kids. kids, and they do bring their and 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 they just when have we're, a good time. Yeah, and we're dog friendly as well. We we can't have dogs in the tasting room, but people are more than welcome to bring their dogs on a leash. And so I know, are we in the Applegate? We are AVA? in the Applegate. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's the Applegate AVA. And you're right next to the Ravalli AVA, and that's just a a border that says you're in this AVA. And what does AVA stand for? Actually, what I know AVA really is 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 to, in order to qualify for a specific AVA, you're what you produce and the, and the ground and the climate has to be similar within that region. Oh. And that's what defines an APA. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. all so right. So the Applegate, most of the Applegate is pretty much the same type of soil. The climate is pretty much the same. You go to the Rogue, it's different. Hmm. Rogue uh, is a little bit warmer than we are. You go to the, uh, at the uh, Illinois Valley, it's cooler. cooler. It's mm. what we call a cool climate. Which has everything to do with how the grapes grow and how the wine yes. turns out. Wow, that is gorgeous. And I should not mention too, we make all our own bread wow. um, daily, um, pizza crusts and all um, fresh every morning. They make the dough and uh, get it ready to go and everything is made in the wood-fired, we have a big wood-fired pizza oven. So my next wine is our 2014 Albarino. Oh. So this just won uh, gold medal at Oregon's uh, Platinum um, Invitational Only Competitions, kind of Oregon's Best of the Best, so we were super excited about that. Albarino is a Spanish varietal, oh. and uh, actually after the summer, we were out uh, yesterday or the day before, he probably pioneered the uh, Albarino in, in, in Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. It has a, has a lot of spicy characters, you know, which you'll, uh, you'll enjoy. A little color, mm -hmm. kind of wheat straw. Pairs very nicely with this cheese. Yes. You have a nice variety. This is a very nice plate. Thank you. Yeah, the boys do a good job with the cheeses. They, my son buys some darn good cheeses. And you make this bread yourself. My son does. Spencer's yeah, quite the bread maker. Wow, that's he, very uh, cool. He, that's not uh, easy. No. no. He, always, you know, he, uh, he makes all the sandwich bread, makes uh, the banquets, and yeah. And they also make a very mean uh, hamburger and fries here as well. <laughs> and, and the fries are all hand cut. So why don't we move to the Syrah then? Yeah. So uh, the 2012 Syrah, um, great vintage on that. Everybody always has a, uh, every region I guess they has a, uh, what they say, this is the great of this region, you know. And there's been a lot of argument in Southern Oregon, the Applegate, of what is great, predominant, predominant uh, uh, great and wine that we should hang our hat on. And there are, there are those folks who say it has to be Syrah such a good job with it, and there's other ones that says it has to be Tempranillo, so it's, it's a debate. I, I say we need to 
such a good job with so many different wines and hardy and cattle and anything. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah, we are a very diverse region as to where people often, you know, come up, come from out of the area and they think of Oregon wines and they think of the Willamette Valley, they think of a lot of a Pinot Noir. Um, but we're we're very diverse down here. We can grow a lot of different things. That's okay. Yeah, that's is a good one. one. Good. I see. I'm not. Gonna, I won't be pouring out any of the rinse. No, no problem. You can take that bucket away. Okay. I have our brand new 2013 Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a new release for us. So the cab is Cal's baby. Well, there are a yes. lot of folks. There are a lot of folks who say you can't grow cab in Southern Oregon. That makes a difference because you can't grow it everywhere. It's like it's like we're never talking about Southern uh, I can grow cab. Our cab that we grow here is quite nice. And it makes it very nice wine. But there are uh, other sites in this uh, valley that you know, can't ripen it. You know? Yeah. And and Cabernet is is, uh, is a late ripener. You know, we we picked uh, cab the day before Thanksgiving. You know, which is uh, not fun. This is lovely. It's completely different from the Syrah. Yes, it is. It's nice. Now we should taste it. Well, this yes. Is just a fantastic. Yeah. So this is the 12 Merlot, and it is it is really uh, turned out. It has that nice, big, full body, sideways, and all that. That will be good. It really did. Merlot, and it's, it was totally unjustified. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of Merlot's one of the finest red wines out there. It is it is it doesn't have the big tannin structure like like a cab, but you know the uh, I love it because it, it is a little bit smoother. It's it's, it's a nice sipping wine. It's going to have a nice red wine. Don't want to make ten, uh, you don't have any, uh, uh, to have a sipping note no for Merlot in my choice. Right. Well, and I think too, Merlot also has those nice, like, you know, red cherry oh, components to it, which, yeah, yeah. And that's why it won gold. And that is why it's oh, one, right. yeah, this nice. one is this it one has, is a double gold. It has what I call the, the back and mid palate yes. structure. Yes. If I taste a wine, I, I smell it. So, well, that's, this, it sounds pretty good. It smells pretty good. On the tip of the tongue, I get a little bit of acid, a little bit of, little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. But if I don't get that, when it rolls across the back palate, I don't get that flavor of blues, blues the back palate. It was a fun, informative, and very tasty experience enjoying the wines and cheese plate with Cal and Renee. Oh, I'm waiting for that pizza. <laughs> we went outside to get a look at the wood-burning oven and the pizzas that were being made. Before I knew it, they were coming out of the oven. They looked amazing. Doesn't get better than this. I love my job sometimes. <laughs> this is the easy part. <laughs> and then we do make our sauce out of our, um, my dad grows tomatoes in the summer. The boys make uh, the kitchen, we call them the boys, but the kitchen guys make uh, sauce out of it. They freeze the tomatoes, pull them out, make the sauce. So the, the sauce is from our, our garden too. We like it because it's thin. Yeah, they, um, it's hard to get a thick crust out of the pizza oven. It's not really made mm. for... Mm. It tastes really fresh. Mm. Mm. I have not had that yet one yet. Mm. It's really good. Yeah. Mm. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Family, food, and wine. Yeah, yep. Keep it going. <laughs> Nearby is the town of Jacksonville where I found a tasting room for South Stage Cellars. All right, well, welcome to South Stage Cellars. This is a semi-on grape. This is one grape, there's no blending here. What I want you to know about, uh, about South Stage Cellars is that uh, we are grape growers. So we grow grapes. We're the largest grape growers in the valley. Uh, we cultivate grapes on 440 acres. And we grow 28 varieties of grapes. So 28 varietals. All right, so I want you to try uh, this beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon. One of the ones that we all know and love. There you go. Just do like this. And this is a South Stage. Oh, I already know I like this one. <clears throat> mm, and so this that's is lovely. one of the many ways that we can uh, uh, collaborate 
with the other grape growers in the valley, the other uh, vineyards, wineries, etc. So that we're working in the spirit of collaboration together. Well, this is such a nice thing to do when you're in the Road Valley. We're in Jacksonville, which is a small historical town. This is a beautiful sparkling rosé. So this is made with the Petite Syrah grape, 80% and 20% Cabernet Franc. Mm. Beautiful variety. Great tasting. Thank right you. here at South Stage Cellars in Jacksonville, Oregon. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you so much, Dottie. All right. Sweet. See you again. Another day of wine tasting was coming to an end, and for tonight's dinner, I made my way to the River's Edge restaurant in Grants Pass. It has been a fabulous day of wine tasting in the Rogue and Applegate Valley. Beautiful day here in January. And now we're sitting at the River's Edge restaurant on the Upper Rogue River to have some wonderful food at the end of a day of wine tasting. Pear. So we have the roasted pear with the brie and a walnut relish. And then we have our wasabi tenderloin with wasabi aioli and the hoisin sauce. Wow. I got to get a little of everything. Mm. Oh my. It tastes almost like a dessert, but better because it's got the saltiness and the crispiness of all the textures of the walnuts and the pear and the cheese and the arugula. Wow. This is a Wagyu beef, a little wasabi. Mm. Oh boy. It's tender and a little bit of heat off the wasabi. And the steak has just a perfect amount of rock salt crunch. That's oh, really good. Perfect wine food. And the volcano pork shank with the whipped Yukon gold and the brown butter baby carrots. I'm not sure how to approach this, so I'm just going in. Ooh, it's very fall apart, very tender. Mmm, yum. Mmm. It's kind of melting your mouth tender with a crispy outside and then the sauce and the potatoes. It's really making a nice meal. The rainbow trout with the caramelized butternut squash and roasted cauliflower and a caper lemongrass butter. This is a beautiful piece of trout. Looks delicious. It's a little caper sauce. Mmm. Nice. It's got a crispy skin and tender inside. And the sauce is light. The pistachio crusted salmon with Brussels sprouts and a honey mustard glaze. I love salmon. I'm a salmon expert. I love salmon that's crusted in nuts with a glaze, a honey glaze on top. Mmm. Oh boy. Wow. Okay. Mmm. Wow. The crust is really crispy. Uh, the, the taste of the sauce just brings it all together. We have a rendered duck breast with wild rice, a cherry port reduction, and brown baby butter carrots. Oh my goodness. All right, this is the duck. It's in a cherry sauce. Uh, the best part about this restaurant, besides the food and the good wine, is that we're right on the Upper Rogue River. And I've had the privilege of tasting many dishes tonight. Mm. Oh boy, it's tender, it's perfectly cooked, uh, medium rare, rare on the inside. Skins adds a lot of taste. The cherry sauce, this is an amazing duck dish. And it's been a really good day, wine tasting in the Rogue and Applegate Valley. Cheers! Wine tasting in Southern Oregon was everything I expected it to be. My little dog Biscuit and I are leaving this beautiful valley and this episode of Sip and Stay. Until next time, cheers!